Okay, good evening everyone and thank you for attending tonight's school committee meeting. Could you please join me in standing to salute the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, could you please uh, join me in a moment of silence? Approximately a year ago, we lost a good friend of the Brockton Public Schools, our dear colleague, Michael Healy. Uh, it's already been, I can't believe, a year. Um, it's really fitting that we're having this meeting tonight because Michael, um, being also, uh, also a proud Brocktonian, was also proud of his Irish heritage, and tonight is um, St. Patrick's Day. And, I'm sure he's looking down on us and giving us a smile. Uh, I don't want it to be sad because Michael's personality was bigger than this room, but if you could just join me in a quick moment of silence for Michael Haley, I'd appreciate it. Thank you all. Okay. Um, the agenda for the school committee is such that uh, the second item is hearing of visitors. We have with us a number of visitors this evening and how this works is that the public is allowed to uh, have each person three minutes apiece and the school committee listens to the concerns of the person speaking and uh, there is not interaction back and forth with the committee. Um, I believe we have approximately 16 people so if, um, if people are going to be repeating something that a previous person said, then I would just implore you to try to be as brief as possible. But you have three minutes. Um, because there's so many people, I, I will be watching the clock this evening. Um, and when we do our hearing of visitors, we, uh, be, we are courteous to one another and we do not make it personal and start calling out individuals um, because that could be problematic and if that happens, um, the person will be told that they have forfeited their time to speak. So, okay, that being said, the first person I see is Ross DePina. Mr. DePina, could you please come down? Good evening, Mr. DePina. How are you? Um, What's that? Yes, sir. Yeah. The floor is yours for three minutes. Uh, I won't be long. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of students here that are going to talk about some of the issues I'm going to talk about. Um, and really why we're here is because um, Brockton's demerit system is um, obviously not working. Um, it's putting a lot of kids, there's a crisis basically, it's putting a lot of kids in situations that they shouldn't be in. Um, the, and w basically what we are seeing as a problem is teachers have extreme latitude to dole out punishment. Um, also, um, from the evidence, uh, the stats that we have, and the anecdotes from the students, we see that teachers are very selective in who actually, who they are going to enforce the rules on and which rules they'll actually enforce. <clears throat> also, um, students have little say in how they're dealt with after they're punished or whatever. Um, because there's a lot of times where the student side of the story doesn't get heard, and it should be. Um, that's a problem. Um, rule, rule enforcers, whether it's the teacher, whether it's the administrative floor teacher, whatever, um, see students as deviants and troublemakers. They don't see them as students. They don't see them as people that they're trying to um, help um, educate and learn. Um, they would rather just kick you out the class and suspend you. Um, <clears throat> Also, you know, this, so since we have this crisis, um, you see students are accumulating 200 plus demerits and nobody's notifying them until they go to the office and then they find out they have 200 demerits and then they're suspended back to back and then they have to do Saturday work and this and that and the next thing to make up for um, what was a failure on the school's part. Um, so this shows a clear lack of leadership, not only at Brockton High, but including everybody here in this room right now. Um, and that's why we're here. Um, <clears throat> and there are other schools that are in Massachusetts that are right down the street that have workable alternatives um, that should begin in Brockton immediately. So um, that's, that's why we're here today. Okay, next is Mark Men Mentor. Mentor. Mark, good evening. Mark, are you a student here? 
I am not, but I'm a Brockton resident. Okay. And I have been in the Brockton school system. So I have a question specifically for Superintendent Kathleen A. Smith. Well, we don't we don't have a back and forth I, question and answer. You, you can certainly call the superintendent, but I I, if you want to ask something, that at a later date I could meet with you, be it if it's possible. I, are you at, you're asking me. I'm available uh, certainly, uh, pretty much at any time. Wonderful. And I'm sure there are members in this audience that will share that that I'm certainly willing to meet with I people you. if you have concerns. So my question is, in your in your term as the superintendent. What have you done to lower the disciplinary rate of the students in Brockton High, particularly the minority individuals who tend to have a higher disciplinary rate than the others? Also, I want to know, I go to Southeastern, which most of the students from my school go to Brockton, and they have similar demographics, but my school does not have a demerit policy. Matter of fact, we, if we get in trouble or suspended discipline in any type of way, it's for more reasons than tardiness or anything like that. My question is, if, if you're getting this, why is it that Brockton High tends to discipline students for reasons that are not worthy of kicking them out of school? If they're supposed to be in school to learn, why are they not in school for reasons as minuscule as being tardy or having a phone out? That's it. If you could uh, put that in writing in a phone number, that would be great so that we can know what your questions are and how to contact you. Thank you. Oh, just submit it to the superintendent's office. Yeah. Okay, um, Samir Odis. Samir Odis. Samir, are you a student here? Yes, yes I am. Okay. I believe that the demerit system gives teachers too much power to find problems instead of seeing them. Like, instead of having to like deal with the problem, they'll actually try to find the problem. Well, not all teachers, but some teachers will actually try to find the problem instead of like anything that's harming them or hurting them in a way. And that's not helping the teachers and the students. That's not benefiting the students because that's actually going to go like to our like future careers, like colleges, they're gonna look at that. They're gonna see that, like, if we have a scene department because we got too many demerits, because we got kicked out for reasons that were, like, not good, then they're gonna see that we we messed up. But even if we didn't mess up, or even if it didn't truly do anything wrong, we're still gonna get affected in the long run. So I feel as if that needs to be changed. But. Is Kevin Price here? Kevin, are you a student here? Um, no. Okay. I'm a student. And my sister goes here. But I was told that, well, my sister didn't really want to come here, but she came here anyway. And she said that Brockton High isn't really a good school because it's the merit system. So, that makes me wonder, I'm a future, I might be a future student here, and I don't want to think twice about coming here. I want to just be like, oh, Bratton High, I can come here. It's right down the street from my crib, walk here. No, I got to think twice about it because my sister's telling me that this isn't a good school for you because I have a bad attitude, I won't lie. I've been learning how to control it, and I controlled it. But she still says that there might be some teachers here that will push their buttons, and you will get in trouble, but it won't be your fault. The teachers will just be looking for that attitude to see what you can get and see where they can get you, see how you can control it. And I think that's not fair, how they're testing us to see if we can control our attitude and they're purposely doing it on purpose. But yeah, but I'm just here to support my upperclassmen and ask, well not ask, I'm gonna ask later. But I just don't wanna think twice about coming here. So I mean, I would appreciate it if you do change the demerit system, like giving us us the time to get to class, or like being able to get to one building to get to our closer building, like, get, like quicker to get to a building, like say if I was in blue, but I was in green, give me a chance to, to cut through green to get the blue real quick, so I won't be late to class, so I don't get the demerits. That's what I feel, and that's it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
next page, Kendall Brown. Okay, Kendall. Um, um, David o O'Marley. Omari, David. Hi, David. Are you a student here? Yes. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Mancello. Good, Good evening. evening, citizens of Brockton School Committee. I'm here because I see a certain problem with our school system. You've seen my fellow associates and people I know from school system speaking about the issue of the demerit system, but it goes deeper than these stories that you're hearing. This is ruining students' futures. It's criminalizing students. It's not telling them you can be all that you can be. It's telling them that you are the problem, no matter what. And that's not what we need to do as educators. That's not what we need to do if we have a position of power in an oppressed community, in a depressed community, where most of the students in Brockton High are high need students in poverty and a constant state of crisis. I think we really need to rethink how we're going about education in the school system because I've been here since 2010 and I have to say I've never quite seen a strain of teachers like this. It makes me sad as an American to say that I go to a school where I've seen teachers, not all, but a significant, a significant amount of them seemingly egg on students. Then once the student responds to something disrespectful, the teacher has said, take them out of the room and take them down to the office. I've seen students put in for demerits they did not deserve. I've seen students told that they were late when in reality they were just standing next to their seat, far away from the nearest exit in the classroom. And I've brought up these issues with my fellow friends, or brought up these issues in many conversations, and teachers tell me, well, what about students' respect for teachers? Yes. Why is there no respect for teachers? But why is there also no respect for students? Why is it we can be somebody's, to uh, put it clearly, why can we be someone's whipping boy? But then we can't have a bad day or else we're the bad guy. I don't agree with any of this and I feel the changes need to be made by any means necessary. Thank you. Uh, Kinsley Odies. Hi, Kinsley. Uh, are you a student here? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, I would just like to say that I believe that the, the merit system at Brockton High is detrimental to the education of our students because I feel as if it limits their time in class in a way because they're getting suspended a lot. I think it's kind of simple. And I think David already said what I needed to say, so I'll just you know, go back. All right, thank you. Uh, Michael Dockery. I know you're not a student here, Michael. <laughs> How you doing? My name is Mike Dockery, and uh, I have a, a whole bunch of concerns uh, it's, it's, uh, I'll try to keep it twofold. The first one is, is, is regarding my son. The second fold is regarding uh, the overall uh, 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 mistreatment of, of minority students. Uh, my, the first issue is my son. Uh, I had a call from, from one of the, uh, the, the assistant uh, house master. He told me to, you know, there was an incident uh, regarding my son. I, I, I asked him a few questions, and his answers were vague. And, you know, within that, I said, "Okay, how could you call a concerned parent and not and not have all the facts together?" He wasn't clear on it. I, so basically, I just showed up. I'm going to try to make a long story short. My son got punished five separate times for the same incident without due process. And uh, first, they transferred him to class. Then they get him with uh, a three days uh, suspension. Then three or four days later, they they filed assault and battery charges against him with, uh, with a dangerous weapon. I was on uh, the phone today with the Board of Education, and, and, and the attorney still asked me, so did they give you give clarif uh, clarification on what the, 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 the dangerous uh, weapon was? I said, no, they still have not answered that. And I told them that 
I met with you, Tom, and I, and I met with Kathleen, and we still haven't got to the issue. And I also mentioned the fact to you guys that 130 students within three hours sent a petition saying that a certain teacher Mr. Pond was well, Michael, you, we, we, okay. I'm, I'm not going to cut you off. I want you to be able to speak, but, you know. Uh, okay, I, well, I, as a certain administrator was, was practicing racial discrimination as far as punishment goes. I mean, just be careful of what you say. Yeah, because exactly. And have I have the, and, yeah, uh, and, uh, and you don't want to get yourself in trouble either. Yeah, but I have the petition of uh, 130 students within the space of three hours. Sign a petition, and this guy still have a job. He's still getting a check from the federal government. The federal law states every student is entitled to an education free of discrimination. That's the basic rule. And based on that, the school the, the school committee have, have, have a job description. The teachers and administrators have, have a job description, and, and and it's not being followed. The fact that he, you know he, he's on school grounds is you know is is beyond me. But not, but not only that, it's not only affecting my family. It affects other family because all those parents that, that that had a form uh, about two months ago and, and said other parents uh, share the same concern. They have to take time off from work, go into a bank account to pay a lawyer to defend their kids in in, in, in the juvenile court when all the stuff could be handled in, with, with, within the school system. Uh, with my son, they came to have a video and I've yet to see the video and yet he got punished in the juvenile court system without proper due process. I've, you know, I actually got to the video. He, uh, I was told by, by, by your staff that the video was blurry and he couldn't make out what the, the incident was going on, but yet my son got punished in the juvenile system. But there's other parents that have the same issue. There's a lady that doesn't want her uh, son to have a criminal record, so she has to pay an attorney every time to go to the court to see this video, and, and she has yet to see it. Now she's spent over 5000 There's other incidents of that, but all that, talking to other parents and other kids, when you suspend them and put them in the juvenile, the, the juvenile system, it, it, it's not uh, uh, affecting me emotionally, it's affecting the family, the family also financially, but not only that, sometimes these kids only eat three meals a day, breakfast at school, lunch at school, and dinner at home. And once they're at home, they, in, in, they, they miss the school, uh, they miss the school uh, you mess with the education, but also that they're, 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 they're means of, uh, of, of getting school lunch. Then there's other stuff, but but I, uh, I'll try to keep uh, I'll try to keep it more brief. Yeah, you have about a minute, so okay. I just want to give you a heads up. There's 80 percent minority students in, in Brockton High, but you have about 90 percent of uh, for lack of a better word, white people who lack the knowledge uh, as far as interpersonal skills, social skills, diversity skills, and cultural skills to the to the kids to to these kids, and basically. Uh, Based on these people, uh, the limitation, they're putting, they're putting their limitation on, on these kids. Now, these kids are suffering uh, as far as knowledge goes as, uh, uh, and as far as skills go, because based on that, 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 that person's lack of ability, these kids are learning what they should be learning and what they could be learning. So uh, 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 I want to mention that point. But also, they, you know, I, I feel it's two victims. The kids are the victim, but the people who are administering to and teach to them is, is also a victim, because what what went wrong in their life for them to punish these kids like that and think it's all right to to, to give these kids a uh, punishment for being tardy, for not doing certain things, or, or, or in general, it, like I said, they're, they're two victims, but but the bigger victim is is the administrator because something went wrong in their life to think it's okay to you know punish kids based on their skin color, not listen to a taxpayer when they when the taxpayer called and said you know what. The federal government states that well, federal law states this, but yeah, they 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 are not complying with that, and and also and, and we had back and forth conversation. Yeah, I mean we we've, we've uh, your time is up, but we've okay. had a lot of conversation. You know uh, that a, a, and we're a lot of conversation with you. Um, I mean, is there anything you want to wrap up? And you know, yeah, we, just like we all, obviously we've had conversation and we continue to have conversation. Yeah, but it's um, it's. it's, it's, it's like being on the treadmill. Uh, it's like being on the treadmill. We, you're not going anywhere. You, you, your attorney, I've, been, I've dealt with t tons of attorneys, and, and for some reason, as an attorney, the, 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 the law is the law, and that's what they go by in court, and yet you have yet to follow it, and that's why I'm so upset, and that's why I'm so pursuing this issue. Right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, page three. Is it Isabel Lopes from Brockton Interfaith Community? Is
Oops. Be, be careful. <laughs> okay. Hello, Ms. Lopes. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Uh, to every teacher, student, parent, allies, neighbors, citizens of this nation. I am Isabel Lopez. I'm from the Brockton Interfaith Community. And I am here on behalf of Big. Um, I'm, I'm here on behalf of Big to support all the students that are here today. Uh, we have seen the statistics, and the statistics prove that this school have big percent, the biggest percentage of a school suspension, suspension among other schools around the, the area. From the 4,371 students, um, we have seen there is 29% of students that get suspended, and we are very concerned about what, what is happening to our students. As you may know, one of our top priorities this year um, is to address the mass incarceration of our people of color. We call it stopping the school to prison legislation. And I want you to know that this is why we're here. We demand that immediate steps are taken to address these issues. We would like to see establish different methods that will address the teacher diversity and cultural competency, the failure and the demerit system that is making the students um, fail as a pathway to go to college. We would like to see you all to work together with parents and students to breach communication and people you and prove that you are working in deep, faith, in deep good faith. We must be intentional about the progress of our, our students in this Brockton High School. We as a community, witnesses, are ready to take a step forward to work together to build a better Brockton High School. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Valencia Powell from Brockton Interfaith Community. Okay. Ms. Kathy Biner, Brockton Interfaith Community. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I echo everything that Isabella has just said. And as a parent that's been on both sides, um, the demerit side, as well as I have an honor student who's here at Brockton, but I just would like to let it be known that I support these youth and the issues that they have raised. Charleston Monfort? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Um, I think you, are, you, are you missing one name off the list? Um, Charleston Monfort? Well, there's a couple more names after Charleston Monfort. There is. Do you see Bradley Souffron on there? I hate to stop it. I just want to make sure the show gets to speak. It was the first name for Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, Bradley who? Bradley Souffron. Yeah. I don't have a Bradley Souffron. Bradley Souffron. Okay, well, I mean, that, that's fine. We'll just have them sign in, but I'm, I'm just telling you, I don't, I don't see it. I'm, I might be blind, but I don't see it. So, um, okay, Bradley, tell me, what you, tell me how to spell your name. B-R-A-D-L-E-Y. Um, and and S-S-what? S-O-U. Yep. F-F-R-A-N-T. Hello? Okay, okay. Bradley Souffron. Yeah. I don't have it, but that's all right. Okay, Bradley, you're up. Are you a student here, Bradley? Yes, I'm a student here. Okay. And um, how's everybody doing? Good. Um, I have a speech, and I just wanted to be able to read it to you guys. So if I could have everybody's <laughs> attention, because I do see the separation in the room. And it's just like nobody, I don't see anybody on the same page. I just want to let everybody know, like, we don't mean to come off like we are attacking anyone. But we do have reason to be angry. We don't want to show off like we're just angry, but we do want to change the system. So please just hear me out. 
Hello everyone, my name is Bradley Soufran. I am a student at Brockton High, and as a student, I want to naturally see how my community and school can get better. Now, I hope you guys will be able to look past the fact that we are youth. Everyone that signed these petitions felt like there was a serious problem within our school system. We signed it because we want to work towards a change in favor of the teachers and the students. Now, it's no debate that the teachers spend the most time with students. An hour a day for 180 days adds up, making teachers a very important part of a student's life. There are many teachers who have passion for what they do, while some teachers at our school treat their job like it's a nine through five. A teacher's underlying motives and passion directly affects how students learn and act in class. A student might see a kid who repeatedly acts up and subconsciously justifies their action to write up the student and send them out of class. But if the problem was to become a constant issue, instead of giving the students demerits, we should take the time to remember that each student is an individual and going through the trans transition into adulthood. Each individual has their own story with an endless list of things that they might be experiencing. Not everyone who breaks the rules do it because they are obstinate and disorderly. A lot of a lot of a lot of times that that's the student's way of crying out for help. The merits can't help their situation. So that brings me to ask, does the system work for everyone? Hmm. Do you know what would work? Having qualified psychologists and counselors who are well trained to deal with these, stu with these struggled youth. Psychologists that can relate to the student's background and understand to, rehab to rehabilitate instead of correct and punish. Out of six different high schools, Milton, Randolph, Canton, Bridgewater, Rainham, BMC, Durfee, East Boston High, Brockton High has the highest percentage of students disciplined at 29%. That means one out of three students have been disciplined at Brockton High. Now, I am not saying that students shouldn't be disciplined. I simply know there are better ways of handling certain disciplinary instances, and I am assuming you all would love to see that percentage decrease. I'm assuming you guys would want to see it decrease as well. Now, if you guys are willing to listen to our voices and work with the youth towards a change, we'll be willing to increase positive youth involvement within the Brockton High student body. For us to be motivated, we need, to, we need the Brockton public schools to meet us halfway. We want to call Brockton High our second home, but we can't until we believe we are being equally treated, taught, and respected. A good step towards that would be an would be altering the environment of the school by amending what everybody on this petition signed for to change and make the demerit system better or change it at all, like change everything about it. So guys, really, why we're here today, we're here because we have a concern. We've been concerned for years. Many students signed our petition, close to like 800 students. And there is no secret that there's a problem with our school system. Now, we do have a, a, a good school. When it comes to our education, it's good. But the only problem we see is our disciplinary system. We want it changed to a better alternative. We want more counselors in the school. We want students to have an interaction with the faculty so there will be less suspensions. There are schools that have zero to close to no suspensions. Why is it our school that always has to suspend? You feel me? Like, why is it that our school has housemasters? Where does housemasters come from? This is not. This is not. This is not. This is not anything like. This is not. This is not something that we are trying to, like, attack you guys with. But we do want to change it. We appreciate you coming. Um, I'm glad to hear that you think you have a good school. Um, and there's a lot of good here. Um, you've gone over your three minutes. Is there something else you just want to wrap up with? I, you know, I, I, I would like to wrap up. I hope everybody can get on the same page. I hope. I hope everybody, you know, can step out of their emotions if you guys are in them and just see the light, see where we want to get with this, see the potential that's in changing with this, like, see the potential this could have on the youth that's coming up because this is not for us, this is for the middle schoolers because the generations are getting worse and worse, okay? There's music influencing our students to do bad. We, they need help, they're crying out. Okay, we can't sometimes we understand that teachers can't be their parents, but sometimes students don't have parents in the household. We live in poverty. Do not forget that. I That's thank it. you very much.
Okay, Charleston, were you here a minute ago and then you went back up? Yeah. How are you? Charleston Monfort, you're not a student. Um, no, not anymore, but I'm uh, recently graduated, sort okay. of. Okay. Um, I just came here to stand in solidarity with these brothers behind me uh, for the effort that they have and um, with the disciplinary policy. And um, they have put together this whole movement. They have gotten the signatures. They've had the meetings. And they've put, been putting in a lot of work. Um, and the issue was very valid. Um, as a student, uh, former student from here, I've definitely felt that uh, oppressive feeling. I'm going to say oppressive because that's the way it feels sometimes. It feels like some of the students here get treated like inmates more than they do students. Um, but Bradley really spoke very well, and all these gentlemen spoke very well about the issues, and um, I just stand in solidarity with them. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Bishop Texera. Good evening, Bishop. Good evening. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you once again. A few years I was, I was here, same issues actually, didn't change, except having a new superintendent, which I give a lot of credit. I think we are blessed to have you, Kathleen Smith. And I hope the mayor will keep you as long as, as you can because you seem to be a woman who wants change. And I, as a man of faith, I, honestly, you, I think you choose a good person to do it because I see the time she has been putting to work some of us in the community. However, the issues continues, and you heard that nice and clear. And uh, too bad the mayor's not here today for whatever reason, but these are the future of Brockton. They don't belong to Plymouth County Hospital Correction, to Bridgewater State Hospital. They belong to these seats tomorrow. They belong to retire O.C. Jordan's been here for many years. That's where they belong to be. And while we're doing Brockton High School, a lot of our kids are end up in jails. And I can't tell names and names. And two years ago, almost four years, we had a big fight here at Brock High School. A young man who was punished three years out of high school. And only to find out the school was wrong. And you can testify on that, is that right? So, uh, and imagine, the mother wasted all her resources. She lost her job, she got sick, the principal treated her like a miserable animal. You know, two pit bulls were shot the other day in Bridgewater. Everybody was looking for who shot the pit bull. And this young man, a young Kevin man, who was kicked out of this school for three years, nobody cared about except myself, Tony, and the mother. Now that's a shame to America. We care for animals, but when it comes to brown and black, we don't care for them. The only place, Miss Jordan, the only place they go is the jails. And I'm tired of going to jails and see my black and brown. You know, in this country, there's 95,000 and plus black and brown kids in jail instead of being the schools, being our future. So if a black is going to do the right job, we need to listen carefully to these young people. Because they'll be honest, we'll be work with them, they've been telling us the truth. Why? Because we see that we are on the grounds. So thank you very much and I hope together we can build a better school. Because the merits is a big issue and when I punish our kids, it's it's very discriminating. How we treat the white and how we treat the black and brown. So I'm willing to work the school. All of us are willing to do this to make Brockton High School a better place, even middle schools, even elementary schools. Thank you very much. And the last person on the list is Ben Cowart. Or Cowart. Hello, Mr. Coward. How are you? How was everybody doing? Good, good. Um, I'm just here to represent my son. Um, he's in the Brockton public school system. Um, he tells me about the demerits, and and I, I don't agree with it. It it it's every it goes against. You know, it's like it finds ways to keep the kids out of school instead of in school, and it's just that it just sucks. Well, I just want to um, mention a story that happened. Let's just be careful with our language, Mr. Okay, Collins. I'm sorry. We're on TV. Okay. 
it, it's not good. Um, Rewind um, 2012, he was in school, and it was a situation where he witnessed a fight in the school, and um, teacher asked him for help. He took it upon himself to help, and in the melee, somehow the teacher decided to say he stomped on a kid while he was on the ground. Okay, you know, went to the, went home, um, got a call, come to the school, your son beat up somebody. You know, I went up there, he told me he stomped a kid while he was on the ground. I didn't agree with it, you know. Um, I'm trying to, you know, cut it short because I only got three minutes, but this happened May 18th. The principal, on May, on May 18th, the principal told me he would be suspended 10 days. Okay, this is my first, I've never been suspended, he's never suspended, so I didn't know the process. But um, he ended up, she kept him out of school for 18 days. It took 15 days for us to get a, a due process hearing. And then on that 15th day, she took three more days and said, okay, he can come back to school, but he'll have to have someone follow him around to the bathroom, which was a female, so if he had to go to the bathroom, it was a female employee who had to stand outside and wait for him. Um, and it just, it, it, it saddened me because we had uh, on the, the, the Monday, it was May 18th, that, that, that was a Friday, then May, uh, Monday, we had 11 witness statements that said my son didn't do what the teacher said he did, but they said he, he helped out, which is what it was his story. Um, so he missed, like I say, missed 18 days of school. She, she made him miss uh, the field trip. You know, she didn't want him to graduate with his class. And it was just, I just didn't know why she was doing this. I mean, he's a, a week before that fight that he helped break up, he actually helped break up another fight. And he used to do that in his elementary school. You know, he's, his, his principal honored him for that. So it's in his nature to do that. Then he came to Brockton High, and he's, um, what do you call that, uh, when you help out the students? Uh, I mean, he's a peer mediator, so they, uh, he was wrongfully accused. You know, we got drugged through the, the court system. He basically had probation for a year. They said if he doesn't get in trouble for a year, he'll, uh, you know, they'll, they won't pursue charges. And, um, um, yeah, um, yeah, they said if he doesn't get in trouble for a year, they won't pursue charges which I knew he would do because of the type of kid he is, but I'm just going on how the, the treat, treatment of, of students, then you fast forward another year, his friend, who was a, a white kid, comes over to my house all the time, he got into a fight in that same school and was clearly the, uh, you know, the combatant, and he got in-house suspension, you know? And that, that just, it, 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 I was upset. And there was one situation when we, when we did go back to the hearing, when, we'd had, when we finally got the hearing uh, 15 days later, I had got a lawyer because I didn't, I didn't have no paperwork saying he was suspended. I, didn't have, I just had what she said. But um, she had a school's lawyer there, and before we met, she had her lawyer tell my lawyer, her, her lawyer, the school lawyer said to my lawyer that the principal said, how about we just pass Benjamin on to high school and we don't, you know, he doesn't come back to school, we just pass him along. Now, is that common practice that they can just pass a student on <laughs> without a hearing? I just wanted to be known that that's what's going on because she, she told her lawyer to ask my lawyer if that can be a possibility, just pass him on without him coming back to school. I, I didn't understand that, but I just wanted to tell my side of the story. Thank you. They, um, they don't have videos. Excuse me, but school. this is for the hearing of visitors. It's not for interaction between you. If you certainly outside can ask all the questions you want. Okay, I think we are done with the hearing of visitors at this point. Um, Can I make a, a, one quick comment? For those who are teachers and uh, administrators, please respect.
respect. Yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. Bishop, we're not, we're, we're, because we are looking at the students that teach us. So, uh, Superintendent, I ask you that these students will be graduating from high school and move on and not going to jail. These are the rest of us that I can do. That's it. Normally, this is not an opportunity, uh, as Mr. Minicello has chaired with you. Uh, I think uniquely, uh, one of the things that, that I will say, and you're correct, we have teachers sitting here, we have students sitting here, and there are a lot of things that you just shared. One of the most important things that I can tell you is, I listened to everything that you said, and your voices are important. It's important for every one of us here that you become productive citizens, that you have a high school experience where you're learning, you're involved in activities, and you bring some very important things that I think everybody needs to hear. There are children living in poverty in Brockton. There are children that have high needs. There are children who, whose parents could be working two or three jobs and don't have the support that they need all of the time. So what I will tell you, and this isn't something new, we've been having dialogue, is I am absolutely available to meet with students, to talk about things that you feel are getting in the way of your education. The most important thing I just heard you say is you're saying to me that you need extra counselors available or people to talk about some of life's happenings. Things that we are very, very deficient in in the Brockton Public Schools and not because we haven't been out there advocating for them. So people that are here from the community, those of you that vote, we're into a budget season very soon. And it's important that we have the support of the community, not just to get together and have dialogue. You know, that, that can be difficult, but that's easy. I enjoy when I see people out there that want to have dialogue. Now, so again, I'm available. We can put together groups. I've already started to talk to the bishop. I've had lengthy conversations with Mr. Dockery about a number of issues. But I do want to say this to you also is Brockton High School, again, we are a very large, probably the largest urban high school around. We're not a small school, and with 4,000 students, we have multiple pathways for students. We're dealing right now with implementing a new, it's called Chapter 222. And it's a new law, and what it does talk about is instead of suspending, taking a look at keeping students in school with peer mediation. We talked about restorative justice. We talked the other day with the bishop about a redemption court where kids actually take a look at some of their actions. Because the other thing that's the most important thing to every one of us out there, to teachers, to administrators, is we need to have a safe and secure school where you are able to graduate, go on and get jobs, and come back and support your community. So we're here listening to you. I'm pleased that you are here tonight. You will be respected, and we expect that same tone of respect when you're in school. We ask that you get here on time, get to class, learn, take part in, again, so many of the activities. So again, this is very unusual to speak, but you're all here. I want to take that opportunity. I work very closely with Principal Wolder, who again is as new as I am. We're new into the jobs, we're dealing with new laws coming our way, but every one of you is important to us. So again, you have my commitment that we'll take a look at a community group. I know Principal Wolder um, has been already starting to put together a student group. And if there are things to look at, then we will look at them. Because the last thing we want for you to be outside of the school setting. But that being said, there are rules to follow, there are policies, there are handbooks. We're willing to look at that if it makes you more successful. So again, I appreciate you coming here this evening. I will make sure that I have an opportunity to speak with you, any of you that are here this evening. I'll certainly keep the list of students at Brockton High School, and I will come and speak with you directly at a time separate from the school committee meeting this evening. So again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> OK. We move on. Uh, the next item in the regular business of the school committee is something called the consent agenda. The consent agenda is a, a number of routine matters that the school committee needs to vote on. Uh, at this opportunity, the school committee, uh, any member has the right to ask that an item be taken out for independent discussion. Is there anything that anyone would like to remove from the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none, can I have a motion? Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. All right.
communication, request from Elections Commission to use the schools as, pol as polling places. We did receive a handout on that from Mr. McGeary. Uh, any discussion with respect to that item? It would appear that these are the usual polling places that uh, are utilized every, after every election. We have, as everyone knows, um, taken steps to try to make the polling places safer for our students. We continue to do so. We're cognizant of student safety as well as the traffic issues that result. Um, obviously, the, the uh, Elections Commission needs to utilize uh, the schools as polling places because there just aren't enough other public buildings appropriate or uh, that can handle the traffic. So, um, motion to approve. Move to accept the letter as presented. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Uh, we'll just wait two seconds. I see a number of people leaving, so we'll just wait a couple of minutes. Okay, next item, item five, report of superintendent of schools with respect to learning and teaching as first item. Superintendent Smith. Good evening. Um, tonight we have uh, our alternate student representative. Can you share with us again your name? Valerie. Valerie, we're excited to have you here. So Thank can you give you. us uh, your report about the happenings at Brockton High School? Okay, so a few weeks ago we held science fair here and there were students who made it to regionals and have won first place. The drama club last weekend went to semifinals and made it to states and they will be competing next Friday in Boston. DECA went into the city and there were students who won at the state level and are moving on to nationals which will be held in Orlando. Um, college admissions night is tomorrow in the auditorium at 6 p.m. where an expert will be coming in to explain how to pick schools and fill out applications including financial aid information. Parent teacher conferences is on Thursday from 6 to 8. Um, Second term honor roll assembly where 1389 students have made it on the honor roll list will be held on Monday and the competition show will be performing. And we have won the National Model School for the 12th year in a row. Yeah, congratulations. So that's the 12th year, correct? Yes. And last night, those of you that attended the city council, we had the opportunity to share a lot of this good news uh, happening at Brockton High School. Um, again, I think I mentioned last time I was here, I was able to see the Drama Festival, uh, FebFest, I believe it is. FebFest, is that right? The Drama Festival? Competition. Competition. So if you get an opportunity, where are they performing in Boston? I don't remember the name of the theater, but I, I can ask. <laughs> we can get that information for you because it is, is absolutely well worth seeing. So congratulations, uh, you know, certainly to all of the students. Okay. okay next item. Uh, principal's report. I'd like to invite uh, Principal Walder down here uh, to talk about scholarship opportunities and the NEASC uh, final report. Welcome, Principal Walder. Good evening. We were on the agenda and snowed out. Uh, so some of this has already happened, but we'll go back over it anyway because I think it's worthy for the community to know and there are still opportunities available for students. Um, one of our community partners, Charlie Verga and ASA, um, the organization ASA who is run by uh, Rose Arthur has worked with us to get some of the colleges uh, to provide scholarship opportunities for our students and to ensure that some of our students in terms of tuition because our, everyone wants to go to college but sometimes what keeps them from going is it's cost prohibitive and so we had several out-of-state colleges um, who guaranteed that they would our students could enroll and pay no more than seventeen thousand five hundred dollars a year for the four years uh, it's um, st. Joseph's in Vermont pardon me per year or total that's per year uh, but it would not go up. In most of these colleges, uh, the amount that it would cost is over $30,000 for them to attend. And so they are 
understanding that uh, the reason that a number of students are not going to college is because it's cost prohibitive. This obviously isn't free, so there would be some work involved in making sure that they could afford it. But they wanted to make a good faith effort to get students onto those campuses so that they could have residential campus experiences and have an opportunity to go to a four-year college. So uh, St. Joseph's in Vermont, um, Mercy College in New York, uh, New England College in New Hampshire, and Green Mountain College in Vermont have all made that commitment. Uh, we also had Fisher College, For in terms of commuter colleges, we had Fisher College both in Boston and the college in Brockton, and Charter Oaks State College in Connecticut commit to making sure that um, students would be able to afford to go to college and that they would support. Part of that process included on February 25th an on-site registration. Students just had to show up with their transcript. College representatives were there. They were able to tell them on the spot whether or not they would be able to accept them. For those who met the criteria of a 2.0 GPA, uh, they helped them get all of the application information there. And so the next step would be for the students to be able to follow through. Uh, what we understand is sometimes it sounds great to say I'm going to college, but if there's no context for understanding what that means, meaning you haven't been on a college campus or you haven't had those experiences, it, they know it's the right answer, they just don't know what the answer really is. And so we wanted to make sure that they had an opportunity to get onto those campuses and see those schools. And so ASA is sponsoring a trip for them in April during vacation to go to the colleges in New Hampshire and Vermont so that they can see the campuses. Um, approved in the consent agenda, yes. which is perfect. So we are excited and we're hoping. So those are cold schools. Those are up north. They, they are up north. New Hampshire, those are cold. Absolutely, these but they have these spring these and summer cabin. too. Uh, <laughs> and we would hate for anyone to say, I don't want to go because I might be cold. That's why we make coats. Um, and so <laughs> we want to make sure that they get, get the opportunity to at least see the campus. We had students sign up last year, and we had one student actually follow through because she did see the campus, fell in love with it, felt like it was a fit, and so she attended. So we're hoping that of the 50 students who participated in that on-site registration uh, that they they will take the trip and some of them will find it to be a fit so that they can uh, pursue their college dreams. Because I went to law school in Vermont and I know how cold it gets. So it's these warm kids and need to sunny. be, yeah, yeah, it's cold. So. In your thoughts. You think, you think it's cold here. Yeah. It gets cold up there. Very cold. So. Well, we'll let, let them know it's cold and buy them blankets and send them on their there way. Go. The goal is to get them to get them to pursue their college dreams, and this is truly uh, one of the affordable opportunities for many of our students, and they will work with them on finances, which is, which is key. Excellent. Ultimately, we have students who say they want to go. Um, they're undecided, and then they don't make those choices so we're trying everything we can to provide them with ways to see that it is possible and and find the right institutions to support them in going on to school so uh, that's coming up and hopefully we'll be able to follow up at the end of the year and give you some where are our seniors going information as they graduate and move on in less than three months this is choice this is a great opportunity for students this is a great savings um, Absolutely. The scholarship does save them quite a bit of money. Um, th is there a limit to the number of students that they award the scholarships to? Um, we are very fortunate that they were hoping that we would have several students apply. So we weren't given a limit. Okay. Um, we were actually asked if there were students who graduated within the last couple of years who were interested uh, to even consider the opportunity as well. So um, there are possibilities for students and it's pretty broad and they're willing to work with us. So I think that if the more we can get students interested in wanting to go, if it's the right fit for them, right, right. the more they're willing to work for, with us. Mm -hmm. And do they follow the same application process that any other student would? This, is the criteria the same? They came in and did on-site registrations, mm -hmm. and w they looked at, of course, they, students have to be on track to graduate with a diploma. Uh, they have to have a 2.0 GPA. Uh, SATs, they expect yeah. students to take SATs, mm -hmm. but in terms of the score that they're looking for, they, they provided some level of flexibility on okay. some of those things. It sounds like they actually, this is a separate 
process that they kind of take out of the mainstream application process. Right. And it's much more individualized. It was very personalized like, yeah. because they they came to us yeah. and said, we're offering you this opportunity. Uh, here's what our school is about. Here's what we can offer you. And could sit with the students individually, look at their transcripts, and say whether or not they were a fit for the school mm -hmm. or not. Do you know if these colleges work with other communities like this? I think maybe in Boston and some other communities. I didn't pursue other communities, yeah. I have to say. I was most interested in ours. No, I understand completely. Well, thanks for sharing this. It's great. Mr. Jordan. Is the money available for four years or until they maybe complete their uh, degree as long as they're progressing in a positive manner? Um, we were told for four years, but that might be something that based on once the students are there, individual needs, they can pursue that. Um, ultimately, they're considered four-year colleges, so when they say four years, they're still expecting students to, to work through and complete it in four years, but once they're on campus, that would be something as an adult that they would have to work with the school that has then been very supportive of them if they needed additional time. Uh, they didn't promise us beyond four years. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. And the next part um, is on NEASC. As you all know, we just went through the accreditation process. All of you were involved at some level uh, with the site visit. It was a two-year process that was, uh, it cost at this point, it has cost $32,208.55, and that includes the site visit um, information, the fees to NEASC, uh, all of the administrative process of getting things together. Um, it was, that was the total amount. Um, and we have to say thank you to all of the parents, our community members, all of you, uh, our students, teachers, and administrators, because this was a two-year process. It started with work in the summer and developing our core values, beliefs, and expectations, and that development went through that first year, and really looking at what we do as a school, where our areas of needs are. And then and preparing for a group of people who were outsiders, 23 of them to come in, who weren't from this community, they had never worked in the school system, to come in and really walk through and judge Brockton High School and say, of the seven standards that they have, how well are we meeting them and where do we have areas of need? I have to tell you, because I know everybody's wanting to know what was the outcome, uh, they haven't decided yet. Part of the process is the final report which you received, and within that process, uh, we have to say, here's what it is, but they haven't told us uh, in terms of our accreditation standards where we are at this point. It, for them, it's up to six months, and so we're not at that point yet. As soon as we know, we certainly will make sure uh, that we come back and let you know. But just for the public's sake, uh, we did ask that it be put on the Brockton Public Schools website for anyone who wants to see the final report. And uh, we will continue to update as, as we get information. Just to remind, the seven standards were uh, the core values, beliefs, and expectations, curriculum, instruction, assessment, school culture and leadership, school resources for learning, and community resources for learning. And we received several commendations in every one of those areas and several recommendations as well. Uh, you have the full report, but I am going to highlight uh, in each of the areas just a couple of things. Um, starting with the core values, and they said that the core values that were created, and there's a chart over on the wall, there's a chart in every room in this school that identifies our core values, beliefs, and expectations, um, that they are embedded in the school culture. Uh, the core values and beliefs serve as a basis for our culture, and high expectations for learning and academic achievement is pretty obvious uh, among, uh, within the school. One of the recommendations that they had for us was to design and implement school-wide analytic rubrics. We were in the process of designing rubrics. We had two years to put all of it together. It wasn't completed yet. They recognized that and said we need to continue and make sure those rubrics are designed. Uh, and that we review our core values, beliefs, and expectations regularly and make sure that we include uh, parent and students in the review and revision. 
under curriculum, uh, some of the recommendations we received was the school's commitment to developing literacy. And as you know, um, what you just heard, we are a, a national model school for the 12th year in a row. And I have to say, some of those young men who were where they were behind me earlier or, or in the area behind me, um, they're part of the reason why this school is so successful. So um, though they have some concerns, they are a part of the success as well. And I want to make sure that I point that out and acknowledge them. And part of our literacy is on speaking. And you can see they're proud, they're brave, and they sat here and, and they did speak about their concerns. And so um, th our focus on literacy has been very helpful. Um, the ease with which teachers make cross-disciplinary connections, and we always talk about making things relevant. It doesn't matter if it only fits in one classroom. And so we work at that, and we were commended for that work. Uh, a variety of authentic learning opportunities for students, and the alignment to the 21st century expectations. Some of the recommendations in the curriculum area, uh, and this is an area where we knew we needed work because uh, the core, common core changed, and we were in the process of updating in our curriculum when we were assessed and so uh, it was clear to us that we need to implement uh, a purposeful curriculum across all departments which is work in progress uh, and develop and implement curriculum guidelines that all look the same so that our format is very similar across the school um, and to ensure that the technology resources are available to implement our 21st century learning expectations uh, even though it's under the curriculum recommendation we did did argue that that was more of a uh, resource uh, recommendation, but they left it where it was. And then to support an uh, the effective integration in technolo of technology. And again, that goes with what we have and then what they down the line say we need. Uh, under the instruction area, we received the most commendations, and it uh, started with the weekly lesson plans. It, it, are reviewed by our department heads, commitment of our restructuring committee, uh, literacy training for all new teachers, extensive use of uh, personalization in instruction, uh, the broad engagement of students in cross-disciplinary learning, uh, the differentiation within the classroom, and the use of alternative strategies to pace instruction for all students. Uh, and then recommendations in that area were to ensure that all of those strategies um, happen in every classroom, in every discipline. And moving on, uh, analysis or assessment of students and learning. Um, the dedication, the accommodation was the dedication of, the teach, of teaching all students to close the achievement gap, uh, our commitment to uh, using data in math, bilingual, and the guidance departments, the frequent use of course specific and school wide open response rubrics. Um, the office suite setup that allows for informal collaboration and the focus on providing corrective and specific feedback to our students. And they recommended to us to develop a formal process uh, based on school -wide, our school-wide rubrics uh, to implement a system of assessment, collect the data, um, and make sure that families are aware of how we're assessing students, and to develop and implement common summative assessments in all subject areas under school culture. Um, actually, we were commended for the decrease in out-of-school suspensions. Uh, so I have to say that this was one of my goals when I came in as principal. And it is one of the areas that we have worked on. And so there has been a decrease in out-of-school suspensions. Uh, you did hear students talk about the demerit system. And I have to also say that it is 100 demerits before anyone receives any kind of suspension. We have put that many interventions in place. So we have done some work. Clearly, we have more work to do. You heard the voices of them, and we will continue to do that. But it needs to be made clear that it it isn't something that hasn't been worked on and already been recognized for improvements. Uh, safe, supportive, and respective uh, school culture, number of informal uh, mentoring and advisory relationships, personalization in light of the number of large classes. Supportive and productive relationships uh, between and amongst the school committee, the superintendent, and the, and the principal. 
and then some of the areas of recommendation to develop and implement a schedule that supports common planning time um, and to cap our class size uh, based on the designated workstations and maintain appropriate class sizes uh, so that we can meet our 21st century learning expectations and school resources for learning, commendations, uh, determination of the school to the school personnel to, co to connect with every student, varied programs to meet the diverse needs of students, and a welcoming attitude and open communication between Brockton personnel and the families. Uh, and recommendations were to increase the available social, emotional, and mental uh, services available to our students and to provide more library services before school. Community resources for learning in that area we were commended for a wide range of programs and services provided to the students. The success for effort to retain our staff, uh, the positive attitude and can-do spirit of our staff despite the large class sizes and limited funding and the resilience of our students and faculty to focus on teaching and learning in light of our constraints. And the recommendations there were to ensure appropriate funding to meet our 21st century learning expectations. Again, they say we need to reduce our class sizes uh, to allow us to meet those expectations and to use the portal to communicate better with parents. So those were some of the commendations and recommendations from the report. And as stated, we don't know the total outcome, but I will remind you all that the chairperson uh, stood in front of our entire faculty and said if he knew someone moving into the community, he would recommend Brockton High School. So I can't imagine he would say that, and then we would not be accredited. But I can't tell you we have been until they actually make it official. study, I believe, is that there are so many people from so many different districts throughout the state and also outside of the state. And I believe that the reason they have people outside of the state is because they really want impartial voices. Um, they want voices from people who see how things operate in, in districts, you know, not part of, you know, Massachusetts, the Commonwealth. Um, and, you know, they're basically, there's no, there's no loyalty to Brockton. They're in there for, as impartial arbiters. They're in there to assess, give the facts the way it is, and that's it. It's not like they're friends with anyone. It's not like they, they have relationships with people in our district. They're outsiders looking in. Um, I'm proud of that report. I saw the report. I read the report. And I met with people uh, from that, um, that uh, board that came in to review. Um, and there was a consensus, just like you're saying, that the culture that overwhelmingly the students get along well, there's uh, harmony amongst the students. Uh, it's certainly a diverse high school, as we know. Um, your staff was you know, commended for the um, energy and what people offer our students. I mean, let's, let's be honest. If we all had an open checkbook, there are things that we would all love to do. If I had $10 million extra in my budget, watch out what, I, what this body could do. And we all would love that. But in terms of we are limited to what we have, and I think we try to do the best job we can, and I think we do a good job. Um, Sharon, I have all the faith. You, you came on to the job recently. I have so much faith in your professionalism, in your leadership, in the way you handle people. Um, you know, I've spoken to staff at the high school. They respect you. They like the tone. Um, you know, over, you know, I have two boys at the high school. Um, they tell me how things operate at the high school. And I have, um, you know, we can always improve on things. There's no, you know, any, any organization, the best organization in the world can improve on things. And we're not going to sit on our hands and we're going to look at things to improve mm -hmm. the experience for our students within the budget and the means that we have. We're going to try to make the best. But um, I want to compliment you and your staff and um, you know that uh, we appreciate what you do. Thank you. And if I could say, um, we had three of those schools asked to come back to visit us, to learn how to do some of the things we do. Uh, so it was, though they were there to judge us, they, they valued some of the things that, that we do. And it was very difficult to have them in the school for all of those days. And I might have been a little argumentative with them at certain points because I felt like because they came from so many different places, 
that they didn't get us. Um, and then as I read the report and could step away personally from it, there were some things we do need to work on, absolutely, and we acknowledge that. Uh, but there were also many things that they could see that are great about the school. Um, that is the reason that we get national recognition for the achievement of our students. And it is about what the students are achieving and the people who go in and work hard every day to try to help that, that to happen. Any questions or comments from the board committee? Mrs. Joyce. Uh, this is a very comprehensive report and I think it, there's a lot of pieces in there that will help us, especially as we go through the budget process, to to focus on specific areas. There's a lot of things that aren't surprises, like the, the, the challenges we've had with substitute teachers. It's interesting that they, that they kind of focused on that a little bit. And, and the technology that we need to improve in the schools, and we know that. And there are resource issues and money issues. And, but if it can help us as a committee as we go through the budget process to focus on some of these key issues, maybe it can help us to kind of bridge the gap a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you sharing that with us, Sharon. Okay, thank you. I also want to reiterate uh, the work that went into this, you know, for two long years uh, with Sharon before she was principal as associate principal, and now Bob Perkins is supporting her the past year to prepare for this visit. Uh, all of the administrators, teachers, and I couldn't have been prouder, and I think you'll all join me, is when we went through the process, our students. And one of the things that kept coming back, and if you read it into the report, again, our students are articulate. They're able to have conversations. They're able to, as we saw tonight, have dialogue about things that matter to them. So again, congratulations to all of your staff. And I think we've made a point tonight to talk about committing to those areas that we need to take a look at, not only in the budget, but I'll say it again, we need the support of the community to make sure that if we value education and we value our high school and each and every one of our students is important, then we started that dialogue last night when we did our State of the Schools address. And one of the highlights was if you listen to, to some of the things Principal Wolder is sharing, we talked about the large class sizes, we talked about the lack of technology. Of course, the joke has been that even with all of the technology, we have a 44-year-old building here and we're really it wasn't built for the technology of today. So there's a lot of things that, that we need to discuss as a community, uh, whether it's a, a 10 year plan, um, but we, we certainly need to move forward and to support our schools, again, which is, I keep saying, at the backbone of our community and our future, as you mentioned tonight. So you know, thank you for all you do. Thank you to your staff and administrators and your students. Oops. Thank you. Good. Okay, and I wanna, um, talk about the State of the Schools Address. I was very, very pleased last night uh, to present to our City Council. I think it was the first of its kind where instead of going before them just during the budget season when there are a number of departments lined up to talk about their budget, we actually had center stage. We were able to speak to them for I think it was well over an hour and a half. Um, I do have copies of this book. If anybody would like them, we will certainly make them available. We talked about uh, certainly uh, many of our schools, our areas, our bilingual departments, special education, teaching and learning, you know, facilities. And most importantly, it wasn't just a good news story, and I keep saying that tonight. It was clearly talking about the challenges that we are facing as a district and making sure that we're able to support our students so that they can remain competitive in this 21st century economy, uh, abilities to go on to college and career, and I think that was very, very clear. I felt we had a lot of support of the City Council. I thought their questions uh, certainly were probing. I wanted them to have this as we go forward with the budget, and we continue to look for their support. Yeah, I thought it was a very good meeting with the Council. Um, they certainly um, are aware of what the concern, concerns are. Um, they share, I believe, in our um, efforts to try and find funding to improve some of the sites, um, which is good. Uh, you pointed out that the city contributes, is it 150 a year? 100 a year? 100. Mr. Thomas, what is it one, each year? Oh, 150,000 150,000 for extraordinary expenses. And I think the message was loud and clear that that is you know, not sufficient or adequate. Um, and hopefully the council will uh, 
look to increase that amount because you know there are many repairs that come up as we all know some of these um, some of these modular classrooms that that it's not maintenance it's major repairs and they need to be done and with those types of um, projects um, the mass building uh, assistance programs don't cover those modulars, correct, Mr. Thomas? That's correct. So those are basically things that the city owns and the city needs to figure out a way how to rehab them um, with city funds, not with MSBA funds because they're not, uh, you know, considered part of the overall structure of the building. So um, I disagreed with some of the comments made by one of the councillors, but I'm not even going to dignify it. Um, but that being said, I look forward to working with many of the um, uh, city council who I, I believe got the message loud and clear and share our love of Brockton and love of the Brockton Public Schools. And we all know that the Brockton Public Schools is the lifeblood of this community. Without, without the investment in the schools, in our youth, in, in our future, what does the city have? Not much. We need to invest in our kids. And, and that basically is what makes Brockton great. It always has and it always will. When people think of Brockton, they think of the Brockton Public Schools and what we offer our kids. The great programs that no community you know, in the surrounding area has the programs we have. And it's something we all as a community should be proud of. And it's something that we all need to support. Um, so that being said, the last thing I want to thank is my leadership team. Uh, I want to thank my deputy superintendents for last evening. Uh, I like to showcase their skills when we talk about our instruction, our teaching and learning. Uh, our deputy superintendent who oversees all of these wonderful facilities and certainly was out there advocating for the funds that we need. I want to thank the BEA president, Kim Gibson. Uh, I always appreciate the support uh, of our teachers as we continue to try to support them uh, in the classroom. So again, and if I haven't said this, I want to say it again to the school committee. This doesn't always happen, and I hope you heard me loud and clear last night. When you have the support of a school committee, I appreciate each and every one of you that took time out of your crazy schedule, you know, to come and support. Um, our city council has been great advocates with us, our legislative group, uh, uh, Mayor, we continue to try to work together to do the best that we can for our kids. And we, we put them first, and that's exactly what we need to continue to do. So again, thank you uh, for last night, and I hope we continue this for years to come, highlighting what's good about the Brockton Public Schools and our challenges. Mr. Jordan. Yes, I'd like to commend the superintendent for uh, originally stating this as something to do that was different and new, and as the state of the schools address. Uh, it was very obvious that the counselors did get a first-hand look at what's going on in the school system. This is something they really didn't have before. It was, if you pardon the expression, right in their face on all the kinds of things that are happening here. And it's, it's very obvious that they were happy to hear this information. Uh, I hope that will help them make the decisions they need to make to keep the uh, system running the way it should. And thank you very much. Thank you. I want to move on and of course I want to address park. So our, our park testing that we selected a year ago and I want to remind everybody that throughout the state we had two choices. We could continue down the road of MCAS and that is not to talk about our Brockton High School which continues to take MCAS as their competency determination. But as far as park, we were a district that cho chose park for many reasons. We chose park because it aligned to the common core. We were field tested it last year in two of our schools, the Hancock and the Raymond, where we actually use technology and online for the first time with high stakes testing. And we wanted to position our students. A decision will be made this fall, whether they will go forward with PARC or with MCAS. We wanted to position our students so they got a look at this new generation of testing. We have five schools that are doing online. The rest of our schools, three to eight, are doing the paper and pencil. And again, Brockton High will continue to do MCAS. That being said, there has been some confusion out there and there's a movement afoot. And the confusion has been the opportunity to opt out of testing. You are not allowed to opt out of high stakes testing. Parents do have concerns, and if parents choose to refuse to have their students take the test, one of the things we're trying to do is to talk to the parents about the reasons for the students taking the test. We need to see are our teaching methods working. The state needs to take a look at this new generation of testing. 
we will get results as to how our schools are functioning. That's important for the work we do because we need to look at what are those areas we need to improve in. Where are our students successful? Where are they struggling so that they can remain competitive? So I want to thank our Office of Teaching and Learning and our principals. There have been a number of calls as we are starting the park testing. I know we're dealing with them each individually and we're sharing as we should be doing. Information with parents so that they can make informed choices. If a parent chooses, again, there is no opt-out, but chooses to refuse to have their child take the park test, then we would be having the children remain in school, have other educational opportunities. But I want to ask the parents again, if they have questions, to please contact us. We're happy to answer any of their concerns. But we certainly advocate for each child to have an opportunity to experience the park testing. Okay, any questions, concerns, comments regarding that issue? Okay, seeing none, we move on. And happy news. I want to introduce you. So you heard me uh, back about a month or so ago, um, Jose Pinheiro retired as the director of our bilingual department after many, many years. Uh, he was fed the other evening with a wonderful retirement party. So um, you're happy for him or you're happy that he retired? I'm Which happy one of the, I'm, I mean, I'm happy you know, for that, him. That comes across as a little, uh, <laughs> could I'm be taken either way there, well, Superintendent. I'm, he had a wonderful party. Um, he, his family was there. It was just wonderful to see after all these years of hard work. So Kelly Jones is our new uh, Director of Bilingual Education. We're so thrilled to have her on board filling those big shoes to fill. She'll do a wonderful job. And I think I introduced Kelly to you back a few meetings ago. And uh, Kelly's position, she was the former bilingual department head K-8, to is now going to be filled by Fernanda Vera Cruz. And I am so thrilled to introduce her to our community. And Fernanda has been a longtime member of the Brockton Public Schools. She's done, I believe, our administrative internship program, which we talk about. She's actually a former student of mine in the Ed Leadership Program, and I know we're going to see great things from Fernanda. So please, again, join me in welcoming her to this role. She will do terrific things for our students. Wonderful. And Two excellent additions. Yes. Or movements, as they say. Um, and that's, that's it. Schedule. I was going to do it into new business. You want me to do it now? Okay. Um, so okay. Unfinished <laughs> business. Do we have any okay. unfinished business? No. Okay. So then we'll go to new business. Okay. Under new business. Um, we, of course, um, again, how did we ever get through, I don't dare say this winter season, I'm going to knock on wood here. Because don't jinx us and say, how did we get through it? It doesn't feel it. like, I know spring is, I think, Friday, but it doesn't feel like spring. So one of, we've had six days out, which to me is just amazing with all of, again, looking at the three major storms we had, and one day each to clean up from the major storms. All roofs were cleared. Our children were back in class. We struggled with some delayed openings because of our three-tiered busing system. So I'm pleased with getting to this point. But one of the things that happened at that point was we were um, into June 29th which is a Monday, and we had one more reserve day, June 30th, before we would have to start looking at other days to take back, possibly April vacation. So I met with uh, Kim Gibson, uh, our leadership again, our president of the Brockton Education Association. A survey was done uh, with our teaching staff, and they have agreed to come into work on Good Friday, which was going to be a, um, a day off, a complete day off. We will have a half day on Good Friday. That half day will be switched with the June 29th date, which will allow our teachers, our children, to start summer vacation on June 26th, a half day. Now, I want to remind everybody that if, in fact, there are any other weather-related inclement weather days, we still have June 29th and 30th before we would have to look at other alternatives. So I'd like you to accept the uh, supplemental calendar, which I know you had a chance to review this weekend. Once you do, we will be giving it out to uh, families so they will be able to follow along with some of the changes. And you can see because of some of the time and our uh, delayed openings, we also uh, took out a half a day uh, professional development day at Brockton High School. I believe that was April 8th. So there were a couple of other adjustments that we made to the calendar. And by going half a day on uh, April 3rd, right? That's Good Friday? April Correct. 3rd. Um, it also allows people to, you know, attend services uh, with respect to, uh, you know, whatever religion they practice and honor 
uh, the day if they choose to go and attend services. So um, it does not preclude people from exercising, you know, their religious beliefs and attending mass. So I think it, um, it it's a, it's I think a compromise that uh, works. Uh, and you know the pro and con, uh, people for and against. Uh, I think it uh, is something that uh, is 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 well intentioned and also uh, takes into account uh, both sides of the issue. So. And the other adjustment in the calendar is the extension of the window for park testing. So the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education allowed us to extend that window. So do we need a motion to accept the revised school calendar. Motion to be, uh, accept the revisions to the FY 215 calendar due to snow days and the other three items that were mentioned during the report. A motion to if, if there are any uh, individual personal conflicts, is there a recourse for anybody? Um, certainly, uh, certainly we have uh, personal days that our staff members have, but Dr. Moran will work if there are individual cases. Any further discussion? Did someone second the motion? Thank you, Ms. Clark. All in favor? Okay, excellent. Mrs. Wilson. Oh. <laughs> you have the wrong name tag. Right, okay. Sorry, you're married again. You're still married. That's an excellent thing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, Okay, anything else under new business? I, this I think is wonderful. Um, I think many of us miss uh, Ed Kelly, who was a longtime staff member, a principal in the Brockton Public Schools, who passed away a couple of years ago, very suddenly. Um, and this was just recently presented. This must have been part uh, of Ed's treasures. And Ed had also been, I think, an assistant principal. Some of you helped me out. I think at the Payne School at one point, which is presently our adult learning center. Uh, Ruth Simpson, um, longtime uh, partner of, of uh, Ed Kelly's, going through his things, came up with a letter, and I'm going to look at the date here again. It was in 1914, and the memo, uh, a letter sent, was from Eldon B. Keith, and of course that's a name that we're going to know in Brockton, and it was talking about naming the Payne School, and it was a recommendation um, from Eldon B. Keith to a Mr. Shapiro. I'm not sure who Mr. Shapiro was, but they were talking about uh, calling the school the George S. Payne School. So I'd like to call Maxine Richardson down here from Community Schools, because the Adult Learning Center now, uh, a pr again, a center for our adults who are learning English as the first time, citizenship classes. Um, so I'd like this to hang. Yes. In the Payne School, if you would take yes, that to uh, Kathy Quinn and the staff, and I just think this is a great piece yes. of history that they can hang up there. I think they'll all appreciate this very much. And Ed Kelly was my principal when I was a teacher at Huntington, so it really means a lot to me too. Very well, thank good. you very thank much. Thank you so much. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Does <clears throat> anyone have anything under new business or would like to share anything? No. Is there anything we need to refer to subcommittee? All right, well, happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Thank you for attending this evening's meeting. Seeing no further business, a motion to adjourn. Seconded by someone? All in favor? Thank you for attending.